Hello again, Biology 300 students. Mr. Parker here, and this, this is screencast session number one on microscopy, which is the study of, uh, of the microscope. And we're going to be looking at, you can see some of the different items, the compound light microscope, the cork cells, and then Anton Van Leeuwenhoek and his um, kind of his primitive form of the microscope. Screencast session number two is going to deal specifically with um, the scanning electron microscope, the transmission electron microscope, and the stereoscope. All right, let's go ahead and get into this one real quick. And um, the gentleman you see here is Anton Van Leeuwenhoek. Um, he's credited for the discovery of the microscope and the development of the microscope. He's also referred to as the father of microbiology because of this discovery of the microscope. Uh, this is a, the time period was a, was around the Renaissance time period in, in midnight in 1640s, around there in the 1640s. Um, what he did was he basically put together in combination for some um, lenses, okay, and these simple curved lenses and the combination of, of multiple lenses together helped magnify the objects that he was looking at. And so he was the one that's being credited for the discovery of these microscopes. Um, then a gentleman um, that came around with uh, the, uh, another gentleman named Robert Hooke, okay, and he came around with um, and some of the uh, things that he contributed to, he contributed two main things to um, the microscope and to science, two big things. Um, he helped improve the magnification of um, the microscope by improving the lenses that were, that were used. Um, and then his other big contribution here, you can see, was that he was, uh, discovered the idea of the cell. Um, when he looked at the, um, what he was looking at was a piece of cork okay, underneath the, mi the microscope that was developed, and he would saw these little compartments within um, the cork, and he was the one that called them cells. So that's where... You know, the first of the name of the cells came about was because of Robert Hook working with a cork cell. Okay, and you can see here um, a little bit of the microscope that he was using at that time period. Um, so he was using just basically the combination of you had the eyepiece, he had some of the objective lens down here. Okay, and then he was using the uh, lights. This was his light source over here. And you can see this is around the 1670s, so a couple, you know, 30. 25 years or so after um, Anton Van Leeuwenhoek. Very primitive, but, you know, I have to be honest with you, the, whole, the microscope now hasn't changed much besides now we're in electricity and you can change the objective lenses. Um, um, but you still have the eyepiece, you still have the objective lens, kind of at the body tube and stuff, okay? So uh, moving from here, okay, you can see here that this is Robert Hooke's cork drawing, okay? And you can see all the tiny little compartments that he was drawing, and he, those were really, that's what he called the cell, okay, and um, and the only reason he was able to see these was because, first off, of what Anton Van Leeuwenhoek did, and then also the, um, the improvements that he made by improving the lenses, um, and the magnification was greater for him, and it helped him see these different uh, microscopic organisms or microscopic objects that he was looking at. Okay, so the compound light microscope, looking at it, it uses two lenses in combination to magnify an image. Uh, can view too small to be seen with the unaided eye material. Okay, so if we can't, obviously we can't see these cells of uh, these microscopic organisms. Um, so we're going to use these microscopes to help us. The object must be um, thin enough for the light to pass through. So when we prepare specimens uh, on a prepared slide, or we're using already, um, sorry, if we're, if we're looking at specimens on a prepared slide that are already done for you, then um, they need to be nice and thin. Or when you your own slide, like a temporary wet mount slide, then you need to make sure the material looking at is very thin so the light can pass through so in order so us, we can see it. Uh, you have the ability to see living organisms uh, with the compound light microscope, and the typical magnification is anywhere between 100 to 1,000 times. Okay, um, So that's a little bit more about the compound light microscope. And here's a little picture for you. And you're going to do a little web quest um, in class that's going to give you more information about each one of these different parts. But here's your ocular lens, or it's also referred to as the eyepiece. That always has a magnification of 10 times. So when you're calculating um, total magnification, you would multiply your eyepiece times your objective lenses that you're working with. 
and we work with the, uh, the scanning power, okay, and then we have a, uh, a low power and then a high power um, within our objective lenses. You can see the arm here, that's for the carrying purposes, your stage, that's where you're going to set your slide on, and your stage will move up and down when we're focusing. Here's your stage clips that will hold your um, slide there in place. You have your diaphragm here. You have two different types of diaphragms. There's an iris or there's an, a, um, a disc. This particular one is an iris, so it kind of closes like your eye, opens and closes like your eye does, um, allowing a certain amount of light to come in. There's also a disc one that could spin. The disc would actually spin, and um, the, within the disc, there's small, smaller to larger openings within the disc that allow a certain amount of light to come in. You have your course adjustment, your fine adjustment. Your course adjustment is um, it brings things into rapid focus. Your fine adjustment you use um, only uh, you're going to use when you get to the um, low and high power to to make that final adjustment you need to see things clear. The course adjustment knob is only used on that scanning power, um, the lowest power you have, because um, if you use it with the high power, you're going to more likely crack the slide. Uh, we have our base, we have our light source, we have our diaphragm, I already said, objective lenses, and our, the revolving nose piece that your objective lenses are attached to. Okay, So that's kind of uh, the compound light microscope, uh, real brief on what they do. Um, you're going to take a little bit more further investigation into it, uh, the compound light microscope, than um, we had before. So as you can see here, uh, we'll be moving eventually into screencast session number two which will be uh, the scanning electron microscope, the transition electron, electron microscope, and the stereoscope. But so we're going to stop here with uh, screencast session number one. That was on microscopy and the study of the compound light microscope, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, and also Robert Hook. So I hope you learned something from this and, and had taken good notes.